If you don't know what this is or you've never had it before, then you've been spending your entire life missing out on the savory pancake on crack of your dreams. Maybe that's a little too much. about okonomiyaki real quick. It's a savory Japanese pancake and it's really meant to be done kind of however you want so there's a couple things that I'm doing in here that some people may or may not like but I feel like in the spirit of okonomiyaki we should kind of be doing it the way that we want truly. It's just a gigantic um umami bomb. One of the things about okonomiyaki that I love so much is the batter being made with dashi instead of water. That like makes such a special flavor. It's, if you can make pancakes, you, well, maybe that's a little, maybe it requires a little more skill than pancakes, but for the most part, it's very easy, okay? Now with all that said, let's do this, shall we? So we're gonna start by making the batter, which is really simple. You're gonna start with one cup or 152 grams of all-purpose flour, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of baking powder, and half a teaspoon or three grams of kosher salt. Give that a good whisking maneuver until it's nice and incorporated. Then add four whole eggs, which have been whisked already, and a half cup or 120 milliliters of dashi. And if you don't have any dashi, you can make it yourself. It takes like 15 minutes. I have a recipe for it, and there'll be a link in the description. You can also just buy dashi granules and add hot water, you know, whatever floats your boat. Then mix that together just until it forms batter don't over mix this stuff then you're gonna finally chop some cabbage and add that to the batter but when you're chopping this cabbage you don't want it to be humongous I would say about the size of a dime lightly season your cabbage with salt toss it and just squeeze it a little bit to get some of the juices going now I like shrimp in mine but I usually pre-cook mine so go ahead and poach a quarter pound or 113 grams of shrimp in lightly simmering water until done about three minutes you can also use dashi if you reel and me showing off my asbestos hands Okay, now to your chopped cabbage mixture, you're gonna add one bunch of thin sliced green onion whites, just the whites, two tablespoons or 30 grams of red pickled ginger. It's been roughly chopped. It's also called Benny Shoga, I believe. Half a cup or 30 grams of agedama. This is optional, but this is literally just tempura scrap. If you don't have any of that laying around, you can just buy a bag of it at an Asian market or omit it. And finally, your poached shrimp, if you're adding it, cut into small bite-sized pizzas. Not pizzas, pieces. Now just give that a good old college toss and then mix, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and then mix that with your batter until everything's nice and incorporated, I might recommend using a utensil like, I don't know, a spatula instead of your hands. If the mixture isn't sort of binding well together, then you can add a couple more tablespoons of flour if you need to. Okay, so our batter is ready, but before we plop this bad boy in a pan, we're gonna need some okonomiyaki sauce. Now, weirdly enough, from what I've read online, you're actually gonna start with two tablespoons or 53 grams of ketchup, but you know, knowing me, I use my lacto-fermented ketchup, which the link for that recipe will also be in the description. Then to that, you're gonna add two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon or 15 milliliters of soy sauce, one tablespoon or 15 milliliters of honey, two teaspoons or eight grams of molasses, then give that some whiskey business until everything's mixed and homogenized. I also added a little splash of the poaching liquid from the shrimp. I also decided to cold smoke this with hickory wood because, uh, I don't know. It's like a Japanese barbecue sauce, kind of. Now, lightly oil a pan. You can use cooking spray and get it everywhere if you want to. And then heat it over medium heat until nice and hot. You know, think of how you griddle pancakes. That's pretty much exactly how you're going to cook this. Now, this is about a 10-inch non-stick skillet, and it took about one and a half cups of batter in there, which is roughly half the batter. And I just pressed it down to fit the entire perimeter of the pan. Now, while that's cooking, though, you can also optionally add thinly sliced pieces of raw pork belly, which I I personally did because why not? Then just season those lightly with salt, and once that bottom is nice and crispy to your liking, which will take about three minutes, but make sure to peak first, go ahead and slide it onto a plate carefully, and then use that plate to then invert the pancake back into the pan to sear the other side. Same amount of time until crispy and brown. Really, 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 honestly, very easy. The inversion is the only difficult part. Uh, that really just comes down to how, coordina how coordinated you are, so. Now, once you've flipped it, make sure to brush that bottom side with some okonomiyaki sauce. Then just cook until the other side is nice and crispy and that pork belly is crispy and brown, like, you know, like bacon, basically. Then brush that side with more okonomiyaki sauce, because that's the goods. And don't you dare hold back. Give it that nice glaze, you know? Now we're ready to top our okonomiyaki. So I like to hit it with a little bit more okonomiyaki sauce, because I love that stuff. Then a nice, generous drizzle of kupi mayo, specifically kupi. But you can also just use regular mayonnaise if you want to. Next, you're going to add bonito flakes, which, you know, of course, I'm going to fresh slice, but you can also use the bag stuff. And it's going to move like this. You see it wiggling all around. That's totally okay. Don't be scared. It's, uh, it's definitely dead. It's just the heat from the pan pancake is making the super thin little pieces wiggle from the heat waves, so yeah. Then a little bit of thin sliced green onion and very thinly chiffonade nori. Then at this point, you just cut that bad boy up in the little slices, almost like a pizza, and uh, well, y you eat it. It's, it's yummy. So yeah.
You want to know what else is yummy? B-roll. Alright guys, and that is it. So, okonomiyaki. It's fun to say, it's even more fun to make, and it's, it's an experience. And I mean that in the most sensual way possible. We're in that kind of mood today, alright? We're there. Easy to make Japanese meal, in my opinion. You know, like a kitchen sink kind of recipe, whatever that means. I don't really like that terminology, because that's gross. Yeah, I toss whatever's in the kitchen sink. <laughs> Delicious. No, we're gonna start using a different term. How about everything in the tub? <clears throat> we'll work on that one. The next video, I think you're gonna be real excited about. Let's just say that it has bubbles and it's beer. You just gave it away, right away. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Twitter. The links will be down in the description. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Oh yeah, I gotta close this. I can't even close it all the way because of the mic.